Hello, you beautiful souls. This is Kalia. And today, the topic of our podcast is who are the light warriors? That's right. Is it you? Do you think it might be you? Well, there are actually a group of people who have been called many things. And I have really noticed this as I scour the internet and YouTube, and I even do my own work where I've talked about empaths. I've talked about the scapegoats. I've talked about different populations of people, highly sensitive people, energetically sensitive people. So they go by these different names, highly sensitive people, energetically sensitive people, scapegoats, empaths, and there are many other names, including a, a new title that's going around called The Chosen Ones, which I find very interesting because The Chosen Ones might imply that we are chosen somehow by God because we're special. And a lot of people have a hard time with that because they don't want to place themselves in a position of superiority. And especially since that narcissist, which is one of the people we do battle with kind of in this journey to the light, place themselves in a position of superiority. So most of us are very sensitive about this and very careful about this. But the term chosen is more like volunteers. Now, I've been talking more and more about Dolores Cannon. I'm certified as a quantum healing hypnosis practitioner, and she is the one that invented quantum healing hypnosis and did the training for that. And she talks about this group of people called the volunteers. And she said how this came about is that after the uh, the first nuclear bomb was detonated and there was the possibility that we would not only destroy Earth, but um, destroy the atmosphere going into other realities in a sense that that setting off a nuclear bomb could be destructive not just to earth but to the entire cosmos so a call was sent out that earth was in trouble and it needed people from these different dimensions of reality kind of light workers to volunteer to come here to help to I, I think save the planet is a, is a little old school, but to help to lift and raise the vibration of the planet to a place where we're not going to blow ourselves up. And so a certain group of people said, yeah, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go help earth. And, you know, I can, I can actually relate very much to Dolores Cannon's description of the first wave of volunteers. They were born in a certain time frame, and then there was the second wave and the third wave. And I'm not going to go into it because that's not the topic of my, of my podcast, but I related to the first wave of volunteers because it's like, yeah, I'll go, I'll help because it's kind of our nature, right? When we see somebody in trouble to want to help, we, we're just helpers. We want to help. And yet when we get in there and try to help, we don't realize what we're signing up for, right? It's like, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? Especially when we find ourselves down here on this planet that is hugely toxic, and then we're trying to help or trying to be of service. And it's more like we're getting our asses kicked. That's kind of how it feels. So, so even Dolores Cannon's description of volunteers fits this profile of what I'm talking about that also those that are talking about the, the chosen group are actually not chosen by God, so to speak, but they are volunteers. They are people who have chosen to come here at this time. Their soul chose to come here at this time to help the planet raise up in vibration. 
This may sound a little far-fetched for some of you, for some that are on a spiritual path, maybe not so much. So people who have volunteered, who consider themselves to be chosen, even scapegoats, empaths, any of those, they can be from any walk of life or any religious or spiritual belief. It doesn't matter because a lot of the characteristics of this group of people are the same. They are highly sensitive. They are highly empathic. They do have a very difficult time fitting in to this society. They often feel alone and isolated. They don't often feel that they belong. They have a hard time fitting into the systems of this planet, like maybe the nine to five work system or many of the other systems, the school systems. They may have a difficult time in relationships because they might tend to be codependent in their relationships as they try to help, as they try to, you know, give and give and give, and they're not getting a lot back until they burn out. And then they might get angry and walk away or, you know, there's a lot of different outcomes. But there is a population of people. It might be 20%, 25 it's hard to say. But there is a population of people that have a very difficult time fitting in to society. Now, Krishnamurti said, it's no measure of health to be well-adjusted to a profoundly sick society. It's no measure of health to be well-adjusted in a profoundly sick society. So think about that. Maybe one of the reasons that this group of people have a hard time fitting in is because we have a profoundly sick society. We're not supposed to fit into that. We don't belong to a profoundly sick society. And it's not our job if we've chosen on some level to be here at this time, it's not our job to fit in to a profoundly sick society, to a highly dysfunctional and toxic society. It's our job to raise the vibration. And what ends up happening a lot is that those who have chosen to come here or those that were born into this reality being highly sensitive and I do believe that we are born into this reality being highly sensitive. I don't think it is a product of our upbringing. I think it's a product of our birth. I think it's who we are as spirits, as souls, is that we come into these bodies and we're already highly sensitive. In fact, a lot of parents of sensitive children will tell you they were born this way. They were always this way. And so we likely were born with the gift of sen sensitivity. It's our nature. It's who we are. And what happens when you're born into this world with high degrees of sensitivity is you can just sense and feel everything around you. You can feel other people's feelings. You can hear the thought forms that are floating around. You can feel when somebody's upset or angry. And sometimes we assume that they're upset and angry at us. When they've been upset and angry for a very long time, it has nothing to do with us. But we often think that, well, you know, especially if they lash out at us or act out against us, we might feel like we've done something wrong. And so another, you know, another term I used was scapegoat is, is that most scapegoats are the sensitive ones in the family. They're all, also the truth tellers. 
in the family because they have a hard time lying or withholding the truth. It's more natural for them to tell the truth. To say this doesn't feel right, or that's wrong, or I don't agree with this. And the result is that when we call somebody out that we often get attacked, right? So think about like that narcissistic person. If you say, I don't like this, this doesn't feel right. How you're treating me is not okay. How you're treating that person is not okay. You are very likely to be attacked by that person on some level. So this happens with sensitive children in family systems is if they're the highly sensitive one in the family, they're often going to be the scapegoat in the family as well. So there are so many different names that are really describing the same basic personality type. And I had a, I had a client the other day that told me that he was highly sensitive. And I just kind of chuckled to myself. Well, actually not to myself. I told him, you know, I'm not surprised because I said most of the people who come and work with me relate to being highly sensitive. They fall on that spectrum. Now, not everybody, but most are highly sensitive. They consider themselves to be highly sensitive. They consider themselves to be empathic. They might consider themselves to be a light worker. Some are consider themselves to be Christians or have different, uh, have other religious beliefs. And it doesn't matter. I work with all religious beliefs because I consider myself to be interfaith. In fact, I was an interfaith minister, which means that I work with all faiths, all beliefs. I believe that there are many paths to God, many paths to the same place. So it doesn't matter what belief system that somebody comes from, somebody who's sensitive is sensitive. And they're going to have the same trials and tribulations of a sensitive person. Somebody that is empathic, you might have heard about the relationship between the empath and the narcissist. Why is that? Well, we have this, you know, the, this magnetic energy that happens. You take two magnets, you take a positive force and a negative force, and they are pulled together, right? They come together with a force. But if you take a, a positive force and a positive force, they really have resistance. They repel each other. Or you take a negative and a negative and they repel each other, but you take a negative and a positive and they come together. And that's what happens, you know, when we're scratching our head going, why do I keep attracting narcissists? Well, it's, it's like that, that light energy and that dark energy, that negative and that positive are polarized together. And this is what we often don't fully understand. Now, a lot of people will challenge me and say, well, not our, all narcissists are dark, but a lot of people will say, oh, yes, they are. So when I talk about a narcissist or a sociopath or somebody in that um, cluster B personality disorder category, they are very much out for themselves. They don't have empathy. And that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who do not have empathy. And when they don't have empathy, they think only of their own needs, wants, desires, without any consideration or concern for who they hurt along the way or who they might destroy along the way because all is fair game for somebody like this. And then you have an empath on the other end of the spectrum that's always thinking about other people, always thinking about the feelings of others. In fact, for empaths in recovery, we 
have to learn how to have really strong boundaries so that we are not trying to take care of people that are harmful to us so that we're not trying to um, feel sorry. So we're not feeling sorry for people that are harmful to us and giving in to them and doing what they want us to do, that we have to really learn to have strong boundaries. So if you're on, on this light warrior spectrum, which is the scapegoat, the empath, the light worker, light warrior, volunteers, the chosen, any of those that are on that light spectrum have to have strong boundaries. They have to learn how to have strong boundaries so that they are not taken over or manipulated by those dark forces. So there is there is something in nature that causes that light and that dark to polarize together, that, that negative and that positive to polarize together. That is an act of nature. And so we can't be too hard on ourselves if that happens, if we find ourselves getting involved with these narcissistic or sociopathic people that don't care anything for us when we care so much for them. We have to just recognize that this is part of the dance. And there's also another purpose for it, is that it is through that kind of dark catalyst that we have our greatest transformation. I know for me, I was thrown in after my first narcissistic relationship that I was aware of, I was thrown into the dark night of the soul. And that was the, one of the most painful things I'd ever gone through in my entire life. People who go through a dark night of the soul, they question everything about their life even the meaning and a desire to live. People who are going through a dark night of the soul often feel suicidal or have suicidal ideation. They don't even want to be here. It's so painful. And the reason they don't want to be here is because they want to get out of pain. But it is that pain that takes us so deep inside of ourselves that we're forced to undergo a major transformation, a major rebirth. And what that rebirth does, what that transformation does is it puts us, puts us deeper in touch with our true authentic nature. And that includes our light warrior nature. It might help us to remember on some sense, especially if we're also on a spiritual awakening path, it might help us to remember that we did on some level choose to come here at this time for this reason. And I know when I read about the volunteers, it's like I could relate to it, but it was like, why would I choose this? why would I choose this, right? A lot of people can, can relate to that. Why would I choose this? And some people even say, I would never choose this. But when you're down in the mire and you're down in that heavy, deep, dense vibration, we don't see things from the same level that we might have seen things before we made the choice to come to this earthly experience. So if you are in the light realms and you're vibrating at a very high vibration and you're living in, in a place where there's just pure, unconditional love and it feels so good and it feels so light, then you look at everything through the eyes of love. You can't imagine what it would feel like to forget who you are to forget that that's what you come from or where you come from and to be thrown so deep into darkness and into these dense energies that make no sense. So when we find ourselves in these deep dark energies, it's like, what was I thinking? Or why is this happening? 
But most people would say, I didn't choose this. I wouldn't have ever chosen this. And that's how we feel when we're in it. We can't wrap our mind around why we would choose such pain and agony. And that is what most of us have to walk through in order to truly remember who we are. So that darkness, in a sense, is our catalyst for transformation to help us to remember that we are light, to help us remember that we come from love. And also to erect those boundaries, because I talk a lot about self-love. We have to love ourselves first. We can't love somebody else that's bad for us so much that we give up who we are, that we lose ourselves in those relationships, or that we keep giving and giving and trying and trying to change something that's never going to change, because it's not our job to change people. It's our job to transmute the dark energy as it comes in, as we experience it within ourselves, our own pain, our own sorrow, our own suffering. And as we do that, we're transmuting the pain, the sorrow, the suffering for the planet. So we're actually doing this really intense work for the planet. In fact, Matt Kahn talks about that. Anybody that follows Matt Kahn, he he refers to this group of people as energetically sensitive. And he basically it says that as we do this work for ourselves, we are doing it for the collective, for all beings. So as we raise ourselves up, we're raising all beings. As we increase our light, we're increasing the light of the planet. And it's really helpful to look at life that way, to look at this whole dance from the way that not only are we transmuting our own energy, our own vibration, so that we can vibrate at a higher rate, so that we'll have more peace, love, and joy in our lives, which is what we all strive for, right? We all want to feel more peace, love, and joy. And so as we work with this energy, and we bring it up, and we we have more happiness, and we have more peace, and more love, and more joy, and we have boundaries, and we're saying no to these these people that have no compassion or empathy because they're they're dangerous right they're dangerous people they are very destructive so we have our boundaries we don't we may love our enemy enemy but we don't let them in we have strong boundaries big huge wide berth around us we don't let them in because we recognize that they're very manipulative, they're gaslighting, they confuse us, they they get pleasure out of hurting, and we don't invite that in. So as we learn how to have those boundaries and stop inviting that polar opposite energy as it's trying to come in, we're just like, whoa, no, I feel you coming in, I feel the intensity of the attraction, but I'm not going to entertain that, not this time. Going to say no to that intense energy. And I'm going to learn how to take care of myself and love myself and allow my own light to increase and be willing to be a candle in a dark room, illuminating that dark room. And as each one of us do that, as each one of us allow ourselves to increase our light, to learn from those dark experiences, to transmute that darkness, to move up the ladder in both awareness and the light that we embody, step into a life where we have more peace, love, and joy, that we are increasing the light on the planet. We're adjoining everybody else that's increasing the light on the planet. And we're raising up the vibration of the planet. We're helping to lift it to a higher place, which is why we came. Because if you think about it, it wasn't so long ago 
that nuclear bomb went off, which showed us our potential to destroy humanity and the earth. And of course, the earth will replenish itself in time. But we're talking about the destruction of humanity. That's no small thing. I'm not a, a doomsday person by any means. It's just looking at reality. We have this power to destroy ourselves. And that power is in the hands of people that love destruction. And that's the scary part. But as we raise up the light, as we raise up the energy, as we awaken, as we, as we see those things we were unable to see before, we can start really making positive changes. And I do believe that is happening now, even though they, we see a lot of darkness still, even though we see a lot of destruction still, there is a whole nother force at work. And, and those that are light warriors are in alignment with that force for good that is raising the vibration of the planet. So you can be thankful and grateful for your mission and your purpose for being here and understand, yes, it comes with challenges. It comes with hard times. And that's why you need a community. That's why you need people who will support you. No man is meant to be an island. We're not meant to do this alone. The tendency is to isolate. The tendency is to be alone, especially if, if you've had a pattern of you know drawing in that opposite, the people that are going to scapegoat you and mistreat you and make fun of you for your sensitivity, tell you that you're too sensitive, tell you that you're overreacting or whatever they tell you. Those aren't the people that you want to surround yourself with. You want to surround yourself with other light warriors and they are out there and you have to find them so that you don't have to do this alone. But we're here in pretty magnificent times right now. And so Although I began my work helping people to recover from narcissistic abuse, now I'm really stepping into helping people to recover from narcissistic society to become those light warriors and heal within themselves so that they can be a healing force for the planet. I hope this has been helpful for you. And if you would like to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, please contact me through my website at NarcissismFree.com or KaliaLaRoche.com, which is also PathBackToSelf.com. And I also have my Inner-Transformations.com for the hypnosis downloads that I have available for you to work with to help to reprogram your consciousness to a higher level. Thanks again for being with me today, for watching and listening, and I will see you in the next podcast. Have a beautiful day.